It was called by some the war to end all wars. Socialists dubbed it the imperialist war. Soldiers often called it the trench war. World War I was, in fact, the first modern war, a war waged with the ingenuity of the industrial age, from telegraphs to tanks, movies to machine guns. Despite being a modern war, the roots of World War I were steeped in Europe's tumultuous past. As far back as 1870, France and Germany were enemies. When Germany won the Franco-Prussian War, it seized two French provinces, Alsace and Lorraine. From then on, a competitiveness for European leadership evolved between the two countries, and a spirit of nationalism gripped them both. This nationalism went far beyond simply maintaining patriotic feelings for one's country. Instead, Germany, France, and other European countries believed that the interests of their homeland should always be put ahead of world cooperation. The resulting contempt for one country by another inevitably led to the risk of war. Nationalism was at the root of conflicts between Russia and Austria-Hungary. Russians believed that they were the protector of all of Europe's Slavic people, regardless of which government they happened to live under. For example, Serbia was an independent country, but millions of other Serbs lived under Austria-Hungary's rule. The result was an intense rivalry between Russia and Austria-Hungary for influence over Serbians in the country of Serbia. Poland had been divided among Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Russia, and wanted to reunite in their own Polish state with self-rule. The Czechoslovakians also wanted freedom and self-determination. Under Austria-Hungary's rule, they were not even allowed to use their own language. Consequently, by 1914, Europe was a hotbed of nationalism, and tensions ran high between the governments and their constituents. While the spirit of nationalism flourished across Europe, many countries were building their global empires. Great Britain and Germany were colonizing Africa and the Middle East in a frenzy of imperialism. France and Germany were now rivals at home and abroad as they clashed over control of Morocco. Russia turned its attention to Europe as she sought control over the Serbs. The contest for international trade, resources, and land soon resulted in a buildup of military strength. The British, Germans, French, Italians, Japanese, and Americans began an arms race, stockpiling weapons, recruiting armies, and launching battleships to protect their interests at home and abroad. As each country amassed countless weapons and beefed up their army and navies, they saw the wisdom of agreeing to military alliances mutual treaties of assistance that would commit each nation to support one another should they be attacked. By 1914, there were two major defense alliances. The Triple Entente, later called the Allies, consisted of France, Great Britain, and Russia, although Russia had a separate treaty with Serbia. The other, the Triple Alliance, later called the Central Powers, included Germany, Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, and Italy. Italy would later join the Allies. For a little while, these military alliances served as a type of checks and balances system, with each nation reluctant to upset the balance of power. But despite these alliances, war soon erupted. A single event would soon tip the scale. On June 28, 1914, in the capital of Bosnia, a village called Sarajevo, Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria and his wife Sophie were waving to the happy crowds from their motorcade when a young man leapt from the sidewalk and shot them both dead. The assassin turned out to be a member of a secret society called the Black Hand, whose goal was to reunite all Serbs under one rule. The assassination was used by the Austria-Hungary government as an opportunity to make an example of Serbia and squelch any nationalist uprisings in the future. One month later, Austria-Hungary declared war against Serbia. If it weren't for the military alliances, it might have been a relatively small, localized conflict. Instead, one nation after another was pulled into the fight due to their treaties of support. In order to aid its Serbian allies, Russia mobilized its armed forces. Germany, 
who was obligated by treaty to support Austria-Hungary, declared war on Russia two days after that. Subsequently, Germany declared war on Russia's ally, France. And one day later, Great Britain, who had a treaty with France, declared war on Germany and Austria-Hungary. World War I had begun. As Germany invaded the neutral country of Belgium, no one foresaw how long the war would last and how gruesome the cost would be. Over 65 million people fought. Over 20 million were wounded. Between 9 and 10 million died on the battlefield, and another 20 million lost their lives due to hunger and disease related to the war. The magnitude of the killing was unprecedented. In just the first three months of the war, nearly the entire original British army was wiped out. Despite all the carnage, the battle lines remained almost stationary in France. The Western Front, as it was known, was defined by two lines of trenches, zigzagging across northern and eastern France for thousands of miles. Wide enough for two men to walk abreast and stand erect to fire their machine guns, the trenches were choked with mire, rats, and lice. German soldiers occupied one line, Allied soldiers the other. Between them lay a no-man's land, filled with barbed wire and mud, smoldering with bomb craters. From time to time, soldiers would storm out of these trenches and attempt to overrun the enemy, only to be met with a hail of bullets. Both sides suffered hundreds of thousands of casualties while accomplishing practically nothing, as the battle lines remained essentially unchanged. Meanwhile, the tools of technology, which had provided prosperity for the industrialized world, were now being used to create more efficient and more ghastly weapons. A soldier described the shocking sight of a machine gun that could fire 500 to 600 bullets per minute. I saw trees as large as a man's thigh, literally cut down by the stream of lead. In 1914, the German army deployed their new cannon against Belgium. Big Bertha, as it was called, could hurl an 1,800-pound shell nine miles. A year later, at the Second Battle of Ypres, the Germans introduced poison gas to warfare. Soon, both sides used chemical weapons like chlorine, which suffocated its victims, or mustard gas that burned the skin and blinded its casualties. By 1916, the British Army began using tanks in battle with great success. Before long, however, German soldiers realized that flamethrowers, weapons that could shoot a stream of flaming gasoline, could be used to stop them. Balloons and then airplanes were converted into weapons of war. When Germany attacked the Belgian city of Liege in 1914, it was the first time civilians were killed by a warplane. Planes were fitted with machine guns and loaded with bombs, and soon began dueling in air-to-air -air combat. These dogfights became a common sight over the skies of Europe. Germany's leading fighter pilot, Manfred Richthofen, nicknamed the Red Baron by the British because of his brightly painted red albatross airplane, shot down 80 Allied aircraft before being struck by a bullet from the trenches and crashing to his death. If I should come out of this war alive, I will have more luck than brains. Even more destruction was waiting on and under the Atlantic Ocean as Germany pressed its Unterseeboots, its submarines, into the battle. German submarines, U-boats, patrolled the Atlantic, firing torpedoes on merchant ships, trying to deliver supplies to the Allies. It aroused the anger of Americans in particular because they felt that this was a violation of the principle of the freedom of the seas, long a cornerstone of United States foreign policy. Germany then launched a U-boat blockade in response to the British blockade along the German coast, which in theory prevented contraband, weapons and military supplies, from reaching Germany. But the British definition of contraband was wide-sweeping, including food and fertilizer for crops. 750,000 Germans died of starvation during the British blockade. 75,000 people lost their lives due to German submarine warfare. 
The blockades continued the pattern of war begun in the trenches. Everywhere, the fighting was inconclusive. While the new technologically advanced weapons made the lack of victories more devastating. 